Section 4.5, we're going to discuss logarithmic equations and exponential equations. This is an example of an exponential equation. I'm going to solve this in two different ways. I would suggest you just kind of hang loose and not copy down the first way, because the second way is going to be a lot better. Now, one of the ways you can solve logarithmic equations, is, excuse me, exponential equations, is by taking the log on both sides. So if, if you have a equals b, then log of a equals log of b. And it doesn't matter what base you choose here. So I'll just put in a little script a here for the base. But that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log on both sides. Now, when I first started teaching this stuff, I had a colleague who was my department chairman. And, you know, this is kind of the way that he approached things. And I was fine with that, you know, it worked okay. But over the years I learned there's probably a, a nice little shortcut you can do, and especially since we can do log of any base on our calculator, it's gotten a lot friendlier. Now, when you take log on both sides, that's great. That term, that x minus one term, can come out in front. So I get x minus one, and it's important that you write that in parentheses. Otherwise, it's just the minus that's multiplying the log. And I want to solve for x. So what could I do? Well, I could divide both sides by the log of 3, and that would work. So let me kind of stick with that notation here. I'll divide both sides by log of 3, log of 3. And I get x minus 1 equals log of 9 divided by log of 3. And that's all well and good. The only thing left to do to solve for x is add 1 to both sides. So you get x equals 1 plus log of 9 divided by log of 3. <sighs> wow. Wow. So after teaching it this way for a while, I thought to myself, you know what? There's a better way to do this, a faster way that I think you're going to like a lot more. So here's where you should start taking notes again. 3 to the x minus 1 equals 9. Importantly, up here I said you can take log of any base. And so what I would suggest is that we choose the base that matches this number here. Let's take the log base 3 on both sides. So log base 3 of 3 to the x minus 1 equals log base 3 of 9. Okay, that's great. Now it's time to use one of our coveted properties of logarithms, stuff that we went over in section 4.4, and that's this one right here. Log base b of b to the x is x. In other words, when the base here and the base here, when they match, you get some real nice simplification. What's it going to simplify down to? Yep, just x minus 1 equals log base 3 of 9. In fact, I think we can do better than that over here. What power of 3 gives you 9? 2. So that means x equals 3. And if you actually went through on your calculator, and did log of 9 divided by log of 3, you would get 2. Added to 1 gets 3. So you get the same thing, but wow, which way do you like better? First way or the second way? Second. Second. All day. Yes? Can I show you what I did to begin with? Or, uh, this, or I got the same answer. Mm, okay. I'm going to hold off on that. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the moral of the story here is to take the log of any base, you know, take the log of this base. Now, sometimes it'll work better than others, but where it works, use it. All right, it's going to work good. Let's try that again. So I'm going to leave this as part of example A. So this is still example A, just the extended version. e to the x squared equals e to the ninth. 
Hmm. Well, drawing on our previous example, I can rewrite this as what? Well, I could take log on both sides, but what base log of them should I choose? E. e. Log base E. This is going to be log base E of e to the ninth and log base e of e to the x squared. The big question is, how is this going to simplify? Any suggestions? How's the left hand side going to simplify? x squared. Yep, x squared. So I get an x squared equals 9. And if you wrote down x equal 3, you would give me a challenge. The challenge is how much pity can I give you in giving partial credit? Because that's not exactly the right answer. Plus or minus 3? Yeah, you need that plus or minus. Now, in this case, forgetting the plus or minus means you're throwing out half the solution. So it leaves me a challenge as to how much partial credit I want to give you. Uh, but do me a favor, give me the plus or minus, and we'll both be really, really happy. Okay. Let's move on to another one. Example B. I like this one. It's not that hard. It just takes a little bit of unpacking. And we're not going to get a nice even number, although I could probably easily write this with an even number. I think I'd have to put 104 Oops. on the right-hand side. You know what? Let me, let me make that uh, 100 on the right-hand side, not 101. So 100. Okay. So to start with on this one, I want to get the x's by itself, so as a good start, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. The nice thing is that that 2 here and this 2 can cancel. It leaves me with 2 plus 7 to the x plus 1 equals 50. Yay! Nice. Then what? Subtract 2 from both sides. Thank you, Sid. Someone else. Now what can I do to finish solving this? Suggestions? I'm open. Take the log on both sides. Great. What base logarithm should I use? Seven. So log base seven of seven to the x plus one equals log base seven of 48. That's great. What happens on the left-hand side? Yep, thank you. It becomes x plus 1 equals log base 7, 48. Or x equals negative 1 plus log base 7 of 48. And that's it. That's your final answer. Now, if you wanted to, you could calculate this one, make sure you got it right, and then you can check it. This is a really cool thing you can do in your math class, but not too many other classes can you check your answer beforehand. You can make sure that you got it right before you even hand in the test. So let me calculate that value first, and I'm going to store it in x. So I'll do negative 1 plus... Then you want to go to the math key to get log base 7 of 48. Hit the math key. Now I could get it by scrolling, but I know it's alpha A. So I'll hit alpha and then the A key, log base 7 of 48. Don't hit the enter key yet. Cursor to the right once and then hit the store key. Store that in X. So you can see all the keystrokes that I used down here at the bottom. Press enter and you get some number, great. If you're asked for a decimal answer, you've got the decimal answer. If not, we can at least check it. 
and we could check it by dumping it into the original equation. Now the original equation is right here. So 2 times 2 to the x plus 7 to the x plus 1, that should be 100. Let's just type in that left-hand side. So 2, parenthesis, 2 plus 7 raised to the x plus 1. Here's your x plus 1. Exit the exponent, write parenthesis, and then press enter. Nailed it. Cool. You know before you hand in the test, you got the right answer. That's really nice. How are we doing on that last one? Doing okay? All right. Can you show the, that X trick again? Yeah. I, I the, the storing it? Yeah. I was yeah. Like, why do you have to do that? You don't have to do that, but it's, it's a convenient way to have this number here, the 0.984, et cetera, into your answer. Oh, I see. So if I go back up, here's kind of a cool trick. If you hit the second key, then the enter key, it'll bring you your previous calculation. If you do that again, it goes back to your previous one. So, you don't so, have to do that to get the right answer. so what I could have done here is I could have typed in two parentheses, two plus seven raised to the answer plus one. And then that, that that actually kind of works the same. It's just if you do that, then you know you don't have the value here stored anymore because now you're gonna have 100. All right, so so that only works once. Because if I did it again, I'd have 7 to the 101 power, which would be gargantuan. All right, good question. So, yeah. How do you do the... The store stuff? Yeah. All right, so the store stuff, uh, once you type in your expression, and now on the 83, to get log base 7 of 48, let me clear this out here. On the 83, to get those... You're going to type in negative 1 plus log of 48 divided by log of 7. Um, and that, oops, you know what? I almost screwed up here. I need a parenthesis around that 48. So I'll just insert one. But there you go. Log of 47, log of 48 divided by log of 7. Hit the store key, which is next to the number 1, and then the number x next to the alpha. And then you should be able to store it. Eh, still not liking something. Let's see. Go to... Oh, I got an extra parenthesis there. Doesn't like that. All right. There you go. So now you're getting the same answer. Now you can type in the same equation that you just did, or I just did, and it should be able to give you... Uh, the correct answer. By the way, when you type in your exponent on the 83, when you're checking this, you want to type in 7 raised to the parentheses x plus 1 power. If you don't type in the parentheses on the 83, it's not going to do exactly what you think it does. So, uh, Anyways, get back to me if that's not working for you. Our little trick Worked out great for the last one, last couple, where we're able to take the log of this base on both sides. Uh, log on both sides, base 7. But you're going to run into a brick wall with example C here. Oh, nothing but net. Nailed it. <laughs> All right. So... Mm, that's horrible. Um, five to the x equals four to the x plus one. Well, you've got x's on both sides and you've got different bases on both sides. So the bottom line with something like this is at some point something's got to give. At some point you're not going to be able to make things as pretty as they were in some of the previous problems. That's okay. Now there's a couple tricks in this problem that I'm going to share with you. And what I want you to do is I want you to start a habit here of, you know, having a little extra column 
and providing some of the narration in your notes that I give to you verbally. Because there's a lot of little tricks that I'll discuss why I'm doing, but unless I write it down, a lot of you aren't gonna really write it down. And it's a habit that I wanna create in you is to take better notes so that when you look back at them, you make sense. Now, in my morning class, I said, all right, we're just gonna take log base five on both sides. And that worked out fine. I'll scan this and put it into the notes um, along with the way we're gonna do it. We're gonna do log base four on both sides. So log base four of five to the x equals log base four of four to the x plus one. Now why are we taking the log on both sides? Is to get the x out of the exponents. So that's gonna help us out a lot. On the right hand side, we get some nice simplification that goes back to this thing here that I circled in orange. So kind of the Y list, log base B of B to the X equals X. What's that gonna give me on the right hand side? Yeah, just X plus one. All right. Things aren't so, so pretty on the, the left hand side. The right hand side, you know, we're okay. Left hand side, eh. but I can use my properties of logs. So, Ella, what do my properties of logs say about the left hand side? How can I rewrite this? Um, move x to the front. Nice. That x is going to come out in front. Thank you. If you'll notice, I've got x's on both sides. I need to get the x by itself. So the first thing I'll do is I'll move the x over to the left hand side. Now when something changes sides, what else changes? Signs. Signs, nice. Okay. I still need to get the x by itself. So, hmm. What I can do is I can factor the x. Factor out the x to get it by itself. So what's that gonna look like? Here's my x. What happens what's left inside the parentheses. Well, I took out an x here, so that better leave behind a log base four of five. Minus one. Minus one. Thank you, Reagan. Can you put parentheses around the five so it doesn't look like? Um, you could put parentheses around the five. That's not a bad idea because a lot of times people want to go, oh, that's the log base four of four. They want to subtract these things, and that's not really what's going on here. So yeah, it's not a bad idea to put parentheses around there, so thank you. Now, we want to get the x by itself. So what's the trick there? Divide. Divide. So you get x equals one divided by log base four of five minus one. And that actually turned out to be a lot more user-friendly than it was from my morning class. Um, morning class had an extra little step to contend with because of the way we did it. We took log base five on both sides. So that meant the right hand side didn't simplify quite as nice. I'll let you copy that down for a second and then I'll show you what I did for the morning class and show you how it differs a little bit. Okay. So you can catch this later when I scan this into a PDF and post it on D2L. But when you take log base four, uh, five on both sides, 
on the right hand side the x plus one comes out in front the left hand side you know that's pretty nice log base five of five to the x that's just an x but here's one of the big differences and you're going to face this in your homework so try and catch on to this you've got x plus one x plus 1 in parentheses times a log base 4, a log base 5 of 4. This term has to distribute itself to both of these terms in order for you to be able to move around the x's. So that's the first trick here, is you've got to distribute. And so many times I see people writing this stuff without parentheses. That means something completely different. Finally, once you move this to the other side, the rest is pretty much what we did. You factored out the x, you divide both sides, and you're good. Now, this expression is going to look different than our expression, but they evaluate to the same thing. You can get a decimal value, and you can check it. One way you can check it is to plug in the x on one side, do 5 to the x, and then do 4 to the x plus 1. Here's a place where you're better off storing the x in your calculator as opposed to using uh, the answer key. Oh. All right, a lot going on in that one. I still got a couple more examples to get through. Um, and I'd like to give you actually a bonus example as well. So let's see how we can do. That was example C, so that puts us to example D. We're going to solve uh, one last one, and it's stuff that you'll see in your homework. So let me help you out with this one. E to the 2x minus E to the x minus 72 equals 0. Now again, there's going to be some tricks in here. I'm going to want to do a little narration for on the right hand side this column here it's not necessarily going to be the first thing you see if you're looking at this without some guidance but this problem is actually quadratic in form so let me let me try and highlight that for you this way um, Inside the parenthesis here, I got e to the x, and this e to the 2x, I could also think of as e to the x squared. Now, we saw this before earlier today in that problem from section 4.4. These exponents multiply, so I'll get 2 times x. But writing it this way means that it's a quadratic in form kind of equation. So, note. This is quadratic in form. Now, we solve these kind of equations in your Math 1150 course, but I'm going to give you a reminder here. You're going to let u equal e to the x. Why? I'm glad you asked. There's going to be your u. And if I make that substitution, that turns us into a friendlier equation. It turns it into something I know and am familiar with. That's u squared minus u minus 72 equals 0. And I hope that makes it a little bit more friendly, at least for the moment. Now remember, I'm just letting you take the place of this stuff right here. We'll eventually go back and solve this for x. But can anyone solve this one, or how would I solve this one? Just do it normally, so x minus 9 times x plus 8. So u minus 9 times u plus 8 uh, equals 0. It actually makes a difference in this one. That's why I'm a little bit more cautious about that. So I get u equals 9 or u equals 8. And this is the beauty thing about factoring. 
you started out with a quadratic equation, now you've broken it up into linear factors, and now you've just got a couple linear terms. But we didn't set out to solve an equation in x. We wanted to solve an equation, uh, or excuse me, we didn't solve an equation, didn't try to solve an equation in u, we're trying to solve an equation in x. So let's go back now. What was u taking the place of? E to the x. E to the x equals 9, or e to the x equals negative 8. At least I got something a little bit more manageable to solve here. What's been our modus operandi? What's been the way that we've been working on this all along? Log base e on both sides. Log base e of 9. Now on the left-hand side, David, how's this going to simplify? Um, we're going to get rid of the e. Or, um, so what's left? Just x. Perfect, just x. And there's another way that I can write log base e of 9. ln, ln of 9. And that's great. You're done. But if I try that over here, log base e of e to the x equals log base e of negative 8. Tell me what happens on your calculator when you try and calculate the log base e of negative 8. Error. Error. What kind of error? Non-real? Okay. I expected it to say domain error, but this is an extraneous solution. So it doesn't really solve the original problem. So you have to throw it out. This is because you can't take the log of a... Can't take the log of a negative number. Remember back to section 4.4 .4 when I discussed some of those graphs, all of these different graphs um, have one thing in common, and that is, well, they have a couple things in common, but the one thing in common that I wanted to highlight is that um, they're not defined to the left of x equals 0. In fact, they're not even defined at x equals 0. They come close to, but they never touch the y-axis. It's a vertical asymptote. And what that's saying is that the domain of the log function is only positive numbers. You have to take the log of something positive if you want to get a, a real answer out of it. So, got to throw that one out. Okay. Awesome. Let's keep going. Uh, we've got to solve logarithmic equations next. So... Let's do that. There's going to be two different ideas of solving logarithmic equations. Solving, and I'm just going to abbreviate it as log. Logarithm was coined from a Latin phrase meaning number of the ratio, which is the way we used to solve them, or we used to calculate them. Now, the first approach to this kind of stuff is if you have the log of A equals the log of B. And here, I'm assuming that you've got the same base on both sides. If that's true, then it looks like you can get rid of the log part. It just means A equals B. What's going on there is a little bit deeper. You can't just cancel out the logs, but that's kind of what it looks like. Really what's going on is you're exponentiating both sides to the base of b. And then the log and the exponents cancel each other out. Anyways, that's the first method. The second method. Second method is if you don't have log on both sides. If I can't get the log of something, it was a log of something else. Then what I could do is, if I have the log base A 
of x equals y, well then this part is not really new for us. You're going to rewrite it using exponents. We're going to rewrite as a to the y power equals x. That's if you only have the log on one side. So those are your two ideas. Let's put them into practice, starting with example E. which is log of x plus log of x plus 3 equals the log of 18. Not that it matters in this particular equation, but what base logarithm am I understood to be using here? It's 10. 10. Log base 10. All right. That's more relevant in the next example than this one. Now, people who maybe don't spend enough time practicing this problem as they should are going to be tempted to cancel out the logs right now and get x plus x plus 3 equals 18. And they're going to solve and they get x equals 15 over 2. That's wrong. You can't do it that way. The thing about this is you had the log of something equals the log of something else. That's not what I have here. I've got two logs. So what I'll do is I'll bring these together using the product rule. That's the log of x times x plus 3 equals the log of 18. Now that's what I wanted. I wanted the log on both sides. And in particular, and here I can distribute that and get log of x squared plus 3x. And I am going to go back and put some parentheses around this. Because I got the log of something equals a log of something else. It's those somethings. And those somethings are called the arguments. 18 is the argument of the log on the right-hand side. This is the argument of the log on the left-hand side. I get x squared plus 3x equals 18. That is a quadratic equation. I hope you don't bust out the quadratic formula for solving that. That's like squirrel hunting with a bazooka. All right, let's just factor this. It factors as x plus 6 times x minus 3 equals zero, and I get two solutions to my quadratic equation, x equal negative six, and x equal three. Unfortunately, if you left it here, you can also take off two points from your paper. With logarithmic equations, you have to check your answer. It's not a, a good thing, it's not a suggestion anymore, it's you have to check your answer. So what do I mean by that and why do we have to do that? Well, the big concern is you can't take the logarithm of anything that isn't positive. It's not that a negative number is wrong, it's just that you can't take the log of anything that's not positive. And when I start looking back at my original problem, if I try and plug in a negative six, I see a problem right away. Oh, you're taking the log of a negative number. This is an extraneous solution. You have to throw it out. Now, this doesn't result in the log of a negative number, so I'm okay there. But this one does. You can actually check this out a lot more in a lot more detail than I'm doing here. But uh, that's where I'm going to stop. Sid? Um, Sydney Clay's account. Sydney. Um, and also, is it possible to? have an extraneous solution where it's a positive x. Yep. Yep. So the, the big concern is that you get a negative number when you take the logs. So let me see if I can't think of an example of a, an extraneous solution with a positive number. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, log base. 
five of mm -hmm. mm. um Um, this isn't perfect, but if you had x equal 5 as a solution, and it, it's not here, but when you plug in a 5, 5 minus 10 is negative 5, and that's a problem. You can't take the log of a negative number. Now, you can have negative numbers as solutions. If I had log base 4 of 8 minus x equals 1, then x equal negative 4 works. Because if you typed in, or if you put in negative, uh, actually I should have made that a 4 here. If I put in negative 4, 4 minus negative 4, I keep on screwing this one up, but it works. Um, you get log base 4, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's still not, still not perfect, but... The big concern is you can't take the log of a negative number. And that can happen for positive or negative values when you plug them back in here. You're just going to have to look at the equation. So, Julian? I was also going to say, can there be a solution where it would result, a training solution where it would result the log equal to zero? Like, yeah, I mean, the, the same, same thing would be true there. If, if you ended up with the log of zero for some value, that you put in here, like like if I had a negative 3 here, log of 0, then you'd have to throw that one out. Because you can't take the log of 0 any more than you can the log of a negative number. Okay, good questions. Um, we've got time for one last example. Uh, actually, I kind of need to do two last examples, so I'll try and be quick about this. Um, so we did an example for method one from the previous one, all right, where we had log of something equals log of something else, and then we got rid of the logs. But what if you don't have that? So example F. So log of 18, or log base 18 of x minus 5 plus log base 18 of x plus 2 equals 1. Hmm. Well, again, you can't just cancel out the logs and get x minus 5 times x plus 2 equals 1. It's not this. We can't use method 1 at all. I can use this, but this relies on the fact that I have one log on the left-hand side, not two. So I'll bring these together using the product rule, log base 18 of x minus 5 times x plus 2 still equals 1. And if you'll permit me, if you FOIL that out, you get x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 1. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to get it into this form because now I can rewrite it using exponents. When you do that, it's always this to this power equals this. So 18 to the first power equals x squared minus 3x minus 10. If I subtract 18 from both sides, I get x squared minus 3x minus 28. And very nicely, that'll factor x minus 7 and x plus 4. So those two solve my quadratic equation. Hmm. And I know you guys are catching up with the writing here, so I won't, won't tell you to take two points off your paper. But if you forget to check this in your original problem and realize, oh, if I put in a negative 4 here, I'll have a log of a negative number. Same thing here. You can't use negative 4, nor can you, well, yeah. But you can use x equals 7. So that's, 
that's the one solution you get out of this problem. Now some of these, particularly exponential equations that don't allow you to do something like this, you can still solve them graphically. And what do I mean by that? The last one for today. Um, this should be done already. I got a student that's hey, in my class. Right hey, here. buzz off. Go celebrate a Penn State uh, thrashing last weekend. All right? All right. Um, let's see here. So, um, the last one I want to look at is right here. We want to solve where e to the x squared minus 9, let me write this down for us. So, e to the x squared minus 9 equals x cubed minus x. That's kind of a pain. You're not going to be able to do that with logarithms and factoring and square roots, stuff like that, that we've learned in this class. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple graphs. We're going to graph, say, y1 equal this and y2 equal this. Graph them and find where they intersect. And where they intersect, at least the x values, is probably what you're going to be looking for. So if you do that on your graphing calculator, you're going to program in both equations into y1 and y2. The window that I would suggest for you graphing that is here, from negative 2 to 2, negative 9 to 5. How did I get that? I experimented. I won't lie. It's not too often you can always look at these things and know exactly where you want to go. But when you look at the graph, it looks like this. How many solutions do you think I'm going to get? Two. Two of them. Exactly the places they're going to cross each other. Now, if, if, if you only need three decimal places, doing this on decimals is really easy. On the graphing calculator, it's a little bit more of a pain. You hit the second key, then the calc key. You want to find points of intersection. So that's number five. Kind of cursor a little bit closer to your point of intersection. Doesn't have to be right on it. And press enter a total of three times. One for the first curve, one for the second, and one just because they're being really, really picky and want one more. So there you go. That's your solution. Like I said, you're probably going to be looking for the y values, or I mean the x values, negative 1.4217. You've got more digits there than you need uh, or could ever want. In fact, if you wanted more, when you click out of here and you type the value of x, it should have that value stored even more decimal places than you see right there. Yes? I'm sorry, you said solution. Aren't, aren't there two? Or am I yeah, there are two. Oh. I just didn't bother finding the other one. I figured you could... Okay. You could handle that. So, the um, we want is the positive one, right? Um, no, you probably want both. I would think they would ask you to list them both separated by commas is how they were going to want it. And just as kind of a little bonus here, you could check that. I could check it because um, I should be able to plug in e to the x squared minus 9. And that should equal the same thing as x cubed minus x. So let me try that. Second, e to the x squared, and then cursor to the right, minus 9. That's my left-hand side. Let's compare that to x cubed minus x, and this is going to be my right-hand side. Keep in mind that I've got x stored in my graphing calculator. Wow, look at that. They're the exact same thing. So, again... There's another way you can check your answers on your graphing calculator and make sure that a week from today, when you hand in your exam, that you've got the right answer before you hand it in. Uh, I would give a thumbs up to practicing this. I am going to have a problem that requires either decimals and or the graph, excuse me, and or the graphing calculator on your exam. But that's it for today. See ya.